This one is the one. This is going to be a banger. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Catherine Sews. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is the video that I've been just itching to do for probably three or four weeks now. I've been so excited for the two ideas that I'm going to be putting together today. And they both, you know what? They both came from comments from you guys. What we're doing today is making two denim maxis out of two pairs of jeans and a bunch of plaid shirts. One viewer sent me a message and asked if I had seen a denim maxi that she had seen online and it was beautiful. And I was like, yes, I need to make that. And then somebody else watched my video about the gathered skirt, the tiered skirt, and she said she wanted to do that using the top of a pair of jeans and then plaid shirts. I was like, okay, those two ideas are like married. They are a match made in heaven. And so I had to go thrift shopping and I was looking for two pairs of jeans that both fit me well, right? I This is not really a time where I wanted to get in, into altering the size of the jeans. So I looked for two pairs of jeans that fit me well and had similar denim colors. Although you could totally play around with different colors of denim, that could be a cool look too. But I thought I wanted similar colors. Well, I ended up finding two pairs of the exact same jeans. It has some stretch, but they fit really nicely and they're exactly the same, so it's nice. The denims obviously match perfectly. When I was looking for the jeans, I wanted something with a wider leg. I did not want to use a skinny jean because I do want some fullness at the bottom. So I think these ones are gonna be perfect. And then I had to turn my attention to the plaid shirt section of the thrift store and came across these three. I mean, you just can't get cozier than that. And I like these three plaids together. They're different enough for some variety and yet they all look great together. I'm gonna try also to show you how you can do a, just a pencil skirt, like a straight denim maxi from jeans, but just by continuing that fly, that center front seam all the way down straight. The way I'm gonna combine the two jeans though is going to add fullness to the bottom and create what I hope is a beautiful flare. So yeah, so let's get going. I'm gonna put those jeans on and start marking them up. Okay, hey, good, so I've got my scrap of soap and now I'm just gonna be drawing a curved line that goes sort of around the hip area and down. Kind of just like that, maybe up a bit higher. My line is cutting through the pocket. I'm gonna remove the pocket a bit and stitch it back on later. But that's kind of the shape that I'm going for. I think this is gonna work. Okay, let's start cutting. I need to make like a little pattern here for this shape. I'm going to be cutting this shape out of both jeans, really, but on the one that I'll be using the center for, I want to make that shape and then come right back out to the edge of the jean. Then the other jeans, I want to make that shape, but flare out this way so that I'm maximizing the fullness at the bottom. I'm just, first of all, drawing a center line where the jeans are naturally folding. Then I've got my sharp tracing wheel and there is a link in the description box to these. This is the line that I'll be using just for the yoke of the other skirt. So I'm not worrying about that right now. Flip. And where they're just naturally folding is on that pencil line I drew. And then trace my line again. And my line is super messy, that's okay. So really it's on the paper where I have to neaten this up. And another thing that there is a link in the description box to, to a curved hip rule. And this just happens to be six inches wide. Good. All right. I don't think I'm gonna add any seam allowance to this piece. I'll add that when I cut. This is the piece that I wanna take the big flare with. I wanna flare this piece out here. So if I fold it not where it just naturally folds, but right on the seam. Hopefully that brings my front and back lines closer together so that I can cut them the same. Oh yeah, that'll do, right? So that's where my front line is. Oh, that's going to be fine. Okay, goody. That makes things a lot easier. So I'm gonna do one leg at a time, I think. But now I don't wanna cut any higher than that. I wanna have seam allowance down here. So I'll put my top of my pattern piece right where I want seam allowance. So I'll go sideways so that you can see more of the leg. So here I'm putting this just seam allowance width below my cutting line there. And I'm just drawing the first little bit. 
for this one now, I want to start swinging this piece out. I'll just do one little bit of a swing and then more until I have a nice smooth curve up here. So I'm bringing it right to the inseam, just making this piece as wide as I can. So I'm using absolutely as much of this leg as I can. And then I have to just sort myself out, make sure I know which line at the top here that I'm cutting. And I think I'm good. Now, I don't want to cut into the pocket bag if I can help it or through the back pocket. So I better stop there, get a hold of my horses there. And I'll just seam up the little corner of that pocket. You could put your seam right through, but nah, I don't think that would look as nice. Now I can get that corner right out of the way and then finish cutting in here. The pocket bag is out of the way as well. There, and now I can finish cutting. Definitely need a right angle coming into the seam here so that I get a nice smooth curve going around the top of this piece. I don't want to point. Yay! That is my side panel. That's a beautiful shape. Yay! Okay, other side. And the second side is easier. Just have the seam right at the edge. Pocket bag out of the way. So I've got it upside down. There's the pocket, but I know that they're cut exactly the same. I do want to make sure that that seam is right at the edge on both pieces, that it's folding right on the seam. That's the only way that I'll know that the two pieces are symmetrical. So I'll pin those together and then cut. Ah! Ooh. Oh, I almost got the pocket. Oof. Glad I stuffed myself in the nick of time. Okay, so there are two side panels. So this is for the second skirt. For the second pair of jeans. Again, I need to remove the corner of that pocket and with the front pocket bags out of the way as well. Because I want to make sure I get it at the same level. Now this one though, I have to cut my seam allowance going the other way in because my sewing line is going to be about here. Therefore, this one needs to be that full inch smaller than this, right? So that's the first difference, is the direction the seam allowance is going in. Now you get it, that's a bit confusing, but I'm just gonna trace this top edge. Remember how I took this pattern, I swung it toward the inseam. This time, I'm gonna do the opposite and swing it back to the side seam. I know I want my one inch seam allowance down here, so, these curved pieces will fit together the whole way. They're just swinging in opposite directions. I can probably just connect right from there to the side seam over here. Okay, so I'm just taking that part out. And then do you see how that's going to work now? This part is gonna sew in, and then there's the width on the skirt that I'm looking for. Nice. So this time I'm trying to cut through both legs at once and it's a bit of a wrestling match. Okay, so that's going into the scrap bin. Actually, that would just be one really cool way to make really flared pants. I'm almost tempted to just go with that. That's just so nice. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sew this piece in before I turn it into a skirt and just see if these are just like the most beautiful jeans now. I am still gonna do the skirt, but I just need to see what this looks like as jeans. I just need to see. There's the corner of my pocket going to the corner of my pocket, so I know I've got it the right way around. So I'll match up the side seams. I'm just gonna pin around these shapes, baste that together, try it on, and hopefully I don't fall too much in love with these. That I mean, I still wanna make that skirt, <laughs> but I just have to know what this is gonna be like. So the shape seems to be fitting in there just perfectly. Okay, so I'm gonna base both sides on like that. Whether it's gonna be for the skirt or jeans, I don't know, that will be the next step. So I want those bottom edges to match up nice and even. I am going to use a basting stitch, nice long stitch, just in case I want to make any adjustments. And I've got the side panel up so I can really watch what's going on as it sort of eases in around the top of the curve. Go slowly over those thick seams. Okay, so 
I'll, I'll sew both legs like that and then I'll try it on. So if you just wanna make some crazy cool wide leg jeans, then you're basically done. I've got a little bit of an alteration to do over the hip. I've just pinned out a little extra fullness. I think these are super fun and super cool as they are. And what a great easy way to make wide leg jeans. Like I'm only what, 10 minutes into this video. That was pretty great, but it is tempting just to keep these as jeans. Like they are so cute, right? It's super tempting. These jeans are just too good. I just can't cut them up and make them into a skirt. What if I don't like the skirt and then I don't have these jeans? I will cry. So I actually have a third pair of jeans that it's not the exact same. It's a bit different, but I only have the one. So I can't piece this together in the same way. So what I'm gonna do is just test out a way of just turning that into a straight seam down the center front to make a denim maxi. I really don't wanna do like the crossover way that we all did in the 70s. That's just nothing new and fresh that I really wanna try right now. I wanna make it that straight seam that denim maxis are showing right now. I just don't know if it'll work with just one pair of jeans, right? Will you have enough fullness or is it gonna be like super tight pencil skirt that you can't even walk in. But at least I'll be able to see if I can do that center front seam so I will know if these awesome jeans would work as a skirt. So what I want to create here is one seam that comes straight down from the fly, straight down. So basically I'm just getting rid of this kind of triangle here. Now this denim is kind of helpful because you can see the grain line here. It follows straight down from there and then just blends into that inseam. Whole inseam has to open up and the center front below the fly and the center back, hmm, what's gonna happen on the center back? I can't go straight right from here because I'll be losing too much off the hip. I have to avoid having any funny shape on the butt. I will open up the center front and center back seam and the inseam. That's quite a bit of unpicking, so I'm gonna go watch the last two episodes of Firefly Lane, and I will be right back. So, I finished watching Firefly Lane, I finished crying, okay. Then, I took my jeans, I opened up that center back seam right up to the yoke seam. So, how I pinned the back is, I followed the grain in the denim up from the inseam, going straight until I had to curve into that center back seam. So that's pinned, and then more or less the seam on the front, following the inseam right up into the base of the fly. So it's super straight, like that's a skinny skirt, but there is stretch to this denim, so maybe this would work. This kind of skirt is really trending right now. There's loads of examples online of a denim skirt exactly like this. And so let's give it a try. I'm gonna have the slit come about like halfway up the leg on the front. And then I think a little bit on the back too, just because you need walking space. Like this is so skinny. I'll try it on and show you. I didn't know. I did not know that you could do this with a pair of jeans and make this awesome skirt. Okay, I've got it on inside out. So it still looks funny. I've got these funny flaps at my crotch and my butt, but, but it's such a good skirt. Like, take a look at this. It's so awesome. And I've got room to walk. Like, it feels amazing on because of the stretch in the jeans. You gotta have the stretch in the jeans for sure. But it feels amazing. Like, I am just getting hugged all the way from my waist to my toes. It's just, a, it's a hug skirt. It's a hug skirt. So I just need to go ahead and finish this one as is. And then I still need to decide about the jeans. Ah, I don't know. Oh, I just love this skirt so much though. This is a, oh, this is a banger. I'm gonna do this right now. I'm gonna finish my edges, top stitch, we're done. But then there's still two other skirts I wanna make. Just before I start sewing, I remove the stitches right up to the base of the fly because I want to change this angle. Do you see that? I don't wanna have this coming down and then angling straight. I want to try as much as I can to get it coming straight down from the fly. So inside this little fold here of the seam needs to move over like that. Can you see the difference? That's the original fold of the seam and I want it to move over that little bit. It's a small detail, but I think I'll be happier if it just looks 
nice there. So I'm going to pin it and then check to see what that looks like on the outside better. When I sew this seam, if I can't get right up to the top, that's okay because I'm going to be top stitching it. And as long as I build in the seam looking good from about this point down. So then I'll be sewing across that like little triangle. Once I get to the bottom, like where I'm blending into the inseam, I want to be sewing right in the little ditch of the seam on both sides, right? See how I've pinned it right in that little ditch. And then on the outside, yes, that looks fantastic. Good, excellent. Kind of the same thing on the back. If I can't get right up into that seam, that's okay. I'll just be sealing it up when I do the top stitch. I just wanna make the blend look really good. See, I don't want it to look like it's been tucked in or pulled in. I want it to look totally pro because I love this skirt and I don't wanna have any little funny bits. So I'm gonna take these stitches out right up to that yoke seam there. Not too bad, right? Okay, oh, that's gonna be better, right? Oh my gosh, what a difference. All I did was tuck that in like not even a quarter inch and the blend is just so much nicer. For now, I just have navy blue thread and a regular needle. Later on, I'll switch for top stitching. Okay, so I wanna be sewing ditch to ditch. I wanna be getting that right to get. And I think I will just lengthen my stitch length to three. So I'm just going from pin to pin now. Okay, so that will do. That's going to be able to go in there nice. So see, I just can't get right up into the fly, but that is okay. I'll just get as close as I comfortably can. And then the rest of that seam gets fixed by the top stitch. And then by the time I finish, I want to be right in those two ditches together. Okay, that will do. Okay, after trying it on, I made one little change. It was showing too much of the darker denim right down that center back seam. So it was like this dark denim like split here. I looked like a Kardashian trying to wear Marilyn Monroe's skirt. Uh, so I've sewn in a little bit closer just to get rid of that dark excess. But here I'm just noticing a little funny pucker at the top there. So that's gotta go. I just don't want anything looking weird and puckery on the front or the back. I just want really nice smooth transitions from the original sewing line to my sewing line. It's hard to get right into that top edge so I'm just leaving like almost an inch gap at the top that I will just seal up with the uh, top stitching. Okay, I think that will do. Yeah, that'll blend all right. And then I don't have that darker split thingy here. So I'll try it one last time. We're all good. Then we're gonna trim. So when I just tried it on, it was sort of uh, poking out funny on the back. So I have to take it in a bit. Not that I want it super tight. I don't really want it any tighter, but I have to take this in because it's just like extra fabric hanging off the back there. It looks funny. So now you have to blend really smooth, pretty much all the way up. After a bit of trial and error, I was finally able to get that center back seam looking really sharp. And so now I'm just gonna cut a finger width away from my innermost sewing line, in the front as well. So now I'm gonna use navy thread in my serger and I'm gonna serge these edges separate where the slit is. And I'll start a little bit above, so that'll be separate. Then I'll come together here. Same thing on the back, a little bit above the slit, that'll be separate, and then I'll come together. I'll do the separate edges first on the slit, and I like to have the right side facing up. And then coming right past where my seam begins, I'll just surge a little bit above the top of the slit, like maybe two inches, and then chain off. Down the other side, the same way, starting that two inches or so above the top of the slit and surging right through that hem, no problem. Then I can surge above the slit. I'll overlap the corner of the hair, and the serger's trimming off all those yucky threads from me and then chain off. Same on the front. Pull out the seam allowance at the hem and surge right over that. With it still folded up into the hem, 
but the seam allowance is coming out. Okay, so the seam allowance at the hem comes out, but the hem is still folded. And then above the slit all together, overlapping the part that I started up here and then chaining off, just like that. Good, okay, to the iron. So to press these seams, I want to press them the way they were originally going. So it was top stitch on this side. So that's the side I want to press it to. Looking good. All right. So these two sides of the slits are just going to get sewn down. So I need to make a little snip right here at the top so that this seam allowance can lay flat, but so can that one. Just like that. Okay, oh, look how beautiful that looks. Ooh. So now I'm switching to a denim top stitching thread. This is from Guterman, and it's just a much, much heavier thread. And so then I also am switching to a jeans or a denim needle because you need the bigger needle with the bigger eye to accommodate that heavier thread. This is where that little gap is, and so I'm trying to tuck that in to make that all look straight. I'll do two lines of top stitching, and then the first one will be right close to the edge. And it's really thick up there. You can see my machine struggling with that section. Go slowly, and you can always just walk the wheel through it. I'm gonna take my serger tail and fold it up into that little fold. And I think I'll just pivot across and come back up. I'll catch the little bit of that hem after. That looks so nice. So to be straight here, I'm just trying to run that toe right on top of my first line of stitching. Oh, and I did increase my stitch length to 3.5 millimeters. So that is looking mighty fine, I have to say. Maybe I will just do that very edge in the yellow. Again, I'll tuck my serger tail in there. And then now I'll just connect back into the original hem. That looks just fine. There you can see how the serger thread got caught in there and now I can cut it off. Fantastic. I Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think that looks actually just great. Same on the back, but now I have to start higher up. I want to just make that transition really nice and smooth, and it's thick in there, so I'm glad I've got my denim needle, but I still need to go slowly and maybe even just walk the wheel. It's actually hard to see the seam there, uh, and I don't want to go off the edge. I want to be just riding right along that seam. So far, so good. So now that I'm at the top of the slit, I'm just going to keep going right along the edge of the slit here. Hmm, I don't have much of a serger tail there, but whatever I've got, I'll tuck into that fold. I'll turn at the bottom a few stitches across. And then come back up. Hey, you're looking pretty good. So now the other side of the slit, same as I did on the back. Ah, I went off the edge. And then I'll just finish off a little bit of the hem. And then I believe this one is done. I love it. I can't wait to show you. So for the jeans, I just pinned that little alteration over the hip in from the inside. It just sits better like that, where I've taken just both sides in around the curve. And then I think I'm gonna go with these as jeans, at least wear them once or twice, and then I can always turn them into the skirt if I want to. But I think it's just a little too full at the bottom. And oh yeah, it does kind of bow out like that. About like that. Will be good, I think, yeah. So I'm just getting like an inch off the bottom, but there is a lot coming out right here. All right, I think that'll be good. I just need to make sure everything's sitting flat around this curve. And 
I want that pocket bag to also sit flat in there. Ooh, a bit tricky there. And the pocket is out of the way. And then on the legs, I'll just follow my wax line. So taking this inch off the leg, they're still really wide legs, but they are just a little less crazy. I think we're all good on the leg and around the hip, so I'll cut off the extra and then serge. I'm cutting a finger width away. Go slowly over the thick seams. Even walk the wheel if you have to. Beautiful. Both legs like that. And now I'm just going to press the seams away from the side panel. I'll deal with the serger tails when I do the top stitching. Mm, look how that pocket corner came right back together. Oh, so pretty. This is the side panel over here. I want to do my top stitch on this side. If I top stitch on the side panel side, it's going to look more like stuck on. But if I top stitch on the main body of the jeans it'll look like that side panel is like fully integrated into it okay but now uh on these jeans top stitching this i'm working in a tube now mind you it's a wide tube with these wide leg jeans but still it's nobody's idea of fun i'm not gonna say this is easy <laughs> so first i'm coming up just beside like just a millimeter away from the seam and of course I have to keep the back of the leg out of the way so I'm sewing about three or four inches and then pushing everything out of the way and then sewing another three or four inches you end up with this big donut around your needle and you know this is an important top stitch it's gonna have to look good and so I'd rather not be sewing in a donut. It is a wrestling match. And that three or four inches I was talking about is now down to about two inches. This is such a nightmare. I'm tempted to open up the inseam so that I can top stitch this and then close up the inseam with no top stitching. Because I can't recommend this as a technique. This is terrible. I'm right in where the pocket's going to cover. So I'm going to stop right here. I mean, the top stitching looks beautiful, but... I was struggling so much. So I think I really do need to open up that inseam. So to take out a chain stitch, it might, oh, look at that was easy. So I pulled it, I just got lucky there. It's not always that easy, but once you get it, it's gonna just run. And then the thread from the other side is also now just gonna pull out. Okay, but there's a double row of chain. So sometimes it takes just a little more effort to get it started. Oh, yep, there we go. So if it didn't work from that end of the seam, I would start at the opposite end of the seam. So now, with that inseam all open, let me now try that top stitching again. Because it is looking good, right? All right, back to the top stitching. So with that all open, now I'm on easy street for the top stitching. I'm going to come up the other side and meet myself in the middle there. So I'm tucking that serger tail in. Can you see how much easier this is? Now I've got a flat piece that can go in here. I'm not working in a donut. So even with the denim needle, go slowly over the thick parts. So that was so nice and easy that I think I will do the second row of top stitching. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that top stitch around the curve. Got a little glitchy in some places, but overall, pretty good, pretty good. And then I can sew the pocket down. Not bad. Our top stitching is done. All I need now is to close up the inseam and then finish off that last little bit of the hem. So this had been a flat felled seam where this one wrapped twice over, right? So I don't want to put my edges together when I'm sewing it back. I want to have this edge set in and then I can stitch in that little ditch there. If I stitch there, it'll look nice on the inside. Obviously, I can't top stitch that inseam again. Otherwise, I'd be back into that terrible tube situation that I was in. But it'll look fine just stitched regularly and then start. And yes, re-sewing this inseam is nothing compared to the effort of trying to top stitch when the inseam was closed. Like, this was fully worth doing. Okay, 
Hey, serger. And this time I will just let the serger trim off that extra fabric. So here you can see the inseam back together. That looks just fine, don't you think? So now I'm just switching back to the top stitching thread so I can just finish off that last little bit of the hem. And then these ones, my friends, are done. I think I just love the jeans too much as is. So I'm going to keep the jeans as they are. But the skinny skirt, I love it way more than I anticipated. And I'll at least wear those wide jeans a couple of times and see if that's going to work for me. And then who knows, I might end up doing the exact same technique that I did to the skinny skirt to turn those wide jeans into a wide skirt. But you don't need to wait around for me to decide. You can still do that if you wanted to. You could make the wider skirt, like with those side panels, do that whole step on your jeans and then turn those pants into a skirt. So you would just put those two ideas together. Do you see what I mean? Do the one thing to the side, one thing to the center, and then you've got the wide skirt. So I might do that down the road. And if I do, maybe I'll do a little short video to follow up. But at this point, I'm just in love with both pieces. So I'm going to keep them as they are but I've got one more skirt that I want to do. And I'm going to take this last little bit of what I cut off of the first pair of jeans and add in the tiers from all these plaid shirts. I can't wait to do that one. I have a feeling that might be the one that I end up wearing the most because it's just going to be very easy going and casual. So what I'm doing for this one is I'm using the same process that I used in this video where I use a differential feed on my serger to gather those tiers. So I'll link that video here and below. I think that'll be done fairly quickly. Okay, let's get into it. So this is what's left of the first pair of jeans. Again, I want to keep the pocket bag out of the way so that I can still have a pocket. Okay, so there's the yoke. So first thing I will do is just see if one of the shirts is narrower than the rest. And whatever shirt is narrower is going to be my top tier. So that one is narrower. Ooh, that one's a lot narrower. Okay, so it'll be this one, then the red, and then this last. So the plaid matches at the front and at one seam, but does not match at the other seam. That is just bothersome to me. I don't like when plaids don't match. Now, I could make a seam here and get rid of the buttons, but I think I'm going to keep them, honestly. Like, it won't all button there'll be a seam across, but I think it's just a cute detail, so I'm gonna leave that. So I'm going to cut across on this line because that is the lowest point on the one side. And then I'm just gonna cut off this seam. I think I have to add in more fullness anyway because I probably want about one and a half times the diameter of the top of the skirt. So I'll just cut up this seam and then that gives me an opportunity to match my plaid. So I think I want my skirt quite long. I think I want it about 30 inches from the bottom of the denim yoke. So if I've got three shirts, I'm gonna see if I can get three tiers that are 10 inches deep. So 10 inches here, I'm gonna need seam allowance on top of that. So I will cut it 11 and that puts me at this stripe and I'll cut all the way along on that stripe. Now this, is probably not full enough. I'm probably going to have to add into this tier. And definitely on the second and third shirts, I'm gonna to have to add in a lot. And then I can take some from here. So I'll keep the pockets on for now. If they end up looking goofy, I can always remove them later, but I don't need to decide that now. So is that kind of a cute detail or is that funny? It's kind of cute, but maybe if it's on the side. Yeah, I might just put it on the side. So. That will be the top tier. I like that. That's fun. Okay. And I'm putting a pin at each of the red lines so that my plaid matches because I like that. Oh my goodness. I didn't even see this till now that this shirt has buttons on the side. Plaid does not match through those buttons though. Dang it. So if I just get rid of that placket then I don't really need it. I'm going to have buttons all over the place. I don't really need another one. So I will still make my plaid match. I'm gonna cut that blue line and this blue line. That will be fine. So I'm definitely going to need two strips of this one. And again, it's got two pockets. If that's where I cut, I get 10 inches to where I come back up here. Okay, so first thing is on this red line, 
So I'm glad that I didn't just take my 11 and try to figure it out from there like I did on the first shirt. A little bit of planning is a very good idea, Catherine. So yeah, planning out your plaid. If you care about the plaid matching, and maybe you don't, maybe I'm being old school, but if you do care about the plaid matching, then just try to plan it out, trying to get two strips where the plaid will be the same. Same over here. I'll need a strip from across the back as well. So I'll have to pay attention to the pockets when I go to gather. I definitely want the pockets facing the right way up. And I think when I piece them together, I will scatter the pockets around rather than trying to have them all in front. Okay, so there's tier two. That is about one and a half times that one. So for the final one, I'll have to also use fabric from the sleeve. So I want to plan out my plaid where I can cut. Are we matching on the sides? Almost and almost. Can I live with that? <laughs> we'll see. This is the longest one too, the widest and the longest. I've got a good 25 inches. So I might make this tier extra long. Figure out where the middle of your plaids are and then you can cut on either side when it's a balanced plaid. So my center is gonna be there and I'll cut here and here. That makes sense to me. Hopefully it makes sense to you. And I think I'm just going to accept the fact that it almost matches on the side. That's the best I can do. And now that center line there. Okay. Here's one strip. And now the next strip is up here on this line. I'll just take that across as far as I can till I hit that shoulder seam. And this way, same thing. And then straight down one of the lines. I'm cutting right through this big pleat. I'll have to open that up. Okay, getting there. And now because I need this one to be one and a half times the previous one, I need to also use some from the sleeve. Find where my plaid is there. So I'll go as high up into the sleeve as possible because that's where it's widest. Mm, and that's taking me right across the sleeve placket. But I should be able to just remove the end of that. Perfect. And then right along this line. And then straight. The sleeve is sort of tapered, so I'll just cut straight up one of the plaids. So that's a good sized chunk that I can get from each sleeve. Okay, so now I have a lot of sections to piece together for this tier. So the first thing I'll do is sew all the seams to make three tiers. Okay, so yes, I'm just going to serge these seams all together. Flannelette is really nice to work with. It kind of sticks to itself and it just cooperates nicely. So I'm chaining all of these seams together then I'll snip them apart and take them to the iron and press those seams flat. So now I not only want to press all of those seams flat, I also want to press the button plackets flat to get that looking good. And I'll just keep a pin in there, but I'll make sure it's visible so that when I go around with the differential feed, I can feed it in together. So on the side of the machine here, this one that says differential feed, I want to turn that all the way to two. And then when I surge around, it does a bit of gathering. It's not a ton, but enough. And I can always pull up the thread a little bit more if I need it to gather in more. So I'm making sure I'm at the top of the pocket here. That differential feed, that one dial is the only thing I need to change to turn my serger into a gathering machine. I'm just feeling on each of those seams that it's staying the way I pressed it. So I did that for all three tiers. Oh my goodness, can you see how this is coming together? I am madly in love, madly in love. Today's a good day. Okay, so now I'm gonna be attaching these. So I'm flipping those right side together, right? So now it's just a lot of pinning all the way around. And there's a lot of layers going into here. Maybe what I can do is cut some of this. It's a bit of a cheater's way. You know, you're not really supposed to cut this, but it's just a lot. 
I would cut more if I could, but anyway, we'll be fine. Oh, I still need to decide about the pockets. Right, right, right. Okay, so this is gonna be coming around like that. Is it goofy to put these pockets? Oh, that's actually kind of cute. What do you think? Do I want to sew the pockets down or is that goofy? That's a bit goofy, is it? I can't tell. I debated about whether I should leave them and have them outside the seam, but I sewed them down and now I'm gonna cut them off. And now right sides together. Here we go. I just more or less wanna get this centered. I could quarter mark and like be really careful, um, but you know what? I want to wear this out to dinner tonight. <laughs> We're going to a friend's house for dinner and I think it's like a cooler fall evening. Like I'm picturing us outside by the fire pit wrapped up in blankets. Don't you think this would be like the ultimate thing to wear? So I want to get this done fast. Okay, so I've kind of got it relatively evenly spaced out in four sections. Then I'm just distributing the, the gathering evenly. Like the middle of the denim to the middle of that section of the flannelette. And then whatever's in between just gets like mushed in, pinned in. This is a casual skirt and it's flannelette. If I mush it in, that's gonna be just great. So I'm trying to get the pocket bag to sit in a logical way on the inside there. Because I've got some super thick parts like this, I think I'll at least begin at the sewing machine for this tier. The rest, I think I'll be able to serge together. Normally I would have the gathered side up, but because I've got so much going on in the denim here, I'm gonna have that side up. And I'm just gonna trust that the gathering is fine. Okay, here comes that thick part. I'm going super slowly and just walking my needle while I'm still afraid and then when i'm no longer afraid i can go okay there we go okay so the rest is fine i think i will sew the rest with the gathered side up i'm stretching a little bit as i sew just so that denim yoke can still stretch when i put it on so i just tried it on as is and if you just want a super cute flirty short skirt you're done it's so adorable just turn a little hem you're done it's super cute but i'm gonna keep building and so here's my next layer there's a button placket which i think i'll put over on the side here so i'm gonna start there i'll flip to be right side together and i'm putting right side together here and then i'll find the exact opposite point and put those two points right side together and this for sure i will just search together this and the next tier and then i better get ready to go out for dinner <laughs> the differential feed is back to one and i can pretty much start anywhere so with the gathered side up i can kind of use the pins to push the gathering around so that it's relatively even okay looking good i had to cut that button off because i was afraid of hitting it but i will be sewing that button back on Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, last tier, and yes, I am excited. I get to wear this tonight. So again, I'm putting it right side together. This is the obviously the biggest one. Ooh, it's massive, actually. Opposite points, that's getting a little harder to do. There, and then bring those two points together and find the point in between. And then lots of pins in between that just fit. Just as if I actually did the math on this one, which I did not. Now, I'm doing a quick little hem all around the bottom. And I'm just gonna do a little double turn. So I'm back on the regular sewing machine. Once my back tack is done, turn and turn. I don't measure, I don't pin on a hem like this, just a double turn and go. And I guess where the button flap is, I will just leave it open at the bottom. All around like that, and then you know what? I am done. Phew, that was a bit of a marathon, but you know what? I absolutely could not be happier. I think this is my favorite video of all time. I'm just thrilled to bits with everything that I made today. And I love that it wasn't really what I set off to make. I was gonna make the wide denim skirt and the tiered skirt. And instead I ended up with wide leg jeans, skinny denim skirt, and the tiered skirt. 
and I love them all so much. How fun is that? How fun is that? You know I'm having fun wearing this skirt. <laughs> if you are here with me to the end, bless your little heart. That was a long one. I hope you love everything as much as I love it all. And I just cannot thank you enough for being along with me for this whole journey. And until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care. Cause I've been